Formula One races take place on Sundays. But if you're a true F1 fan, you'll know that most of the drama and thrill actually happens on Saturdays. That's all because of the thrill of qualifying. Of course, the races are thrilling, but the qualifying rounds aren't any less dramatic. But let's be real, the qualifying system isn't exactly simple. So today, let's get into how qualifying works in F1. Before we start, make sure to smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Currently, Formula One uses a knockout qualifying system. The first session is called Q1 and is 18 minutes long. All 20 F1 drivers participate in it, and each of them tries to set the fastest lap time possible. The top 15 lap times move on to the next period of qualifying, called Q2, and the bottom five are eliminated. The five eliminated drivers will start the race in the last five positions on the grid. Q2 is slightly shorter than Q1 at 15 minutes, but it follows the same format. In this stage, drivers try their best to move on to the final qualifying stage, Q3, but only the 10 fastest cars make it to Q3. Again, the five drivers with the slowest lap times are eliminated, and they start the race from the 11th to 15th positions based on their best lap time. Finally, in Q3, the 10 drivers have only 12 minutes to attempt to set the fastest lap time and determine the order for the front 10 positions of the grid. The slowest driver in Q3 starts at 10th, and the second slowest starts at 9th, and so on. The fastest lap time in Q1 awards the driver pole position, which refers to the first spot on the starting grid. It may be on the outside or the inside. That depends on the particular track. But either way, it's meant to be a starting position that provides an advantage to the driver relative to the racing line. In F1 today, all the cars qualify for the race, but that wasn't always the case. In the past, there were more cars entered for each race than available space on the track. In that scenario, not all cars would qualify for the race. The slowest cars that were not able to race would be listed as DNQ or did not qualify in the race results. However, if we go to the late 1980s and early 1990s, the number of cars attempting to participate in each race could go as high as 39, which was way too many. In fact, it was dangerous to have that many cars on the track at the same time. So, to filter some of these cars out, a pre-qualifying stage was also used. For that, the teams that had the worst record over the last six months would need to participate in the pre-qualifying stage. This also included all new teams. And then, only the four fastest cars from this session were allowed to go forward and participate in the qualifying stage. And the slowest cars that got eliminated in the pre-qualifying stage were listed in the race results as DNPQ or did not pre-qualify. However, after 2002, many small teams left the sport, and with that, the pre-qualifying stage was no longer a necessity. Too many cars trying to enter a race wasn't the only problem. When this number of cars fell below 26, that caused another problem. It meant all the cars would automatically qualify for the race, but some cars were much slower than most of the other cars, which caused problems in the race. So to counter that, the 107% rule was introduced in 1996. The rule meant that if any car's qualifying time was not within the 107% of the pole time, that car would not be able to qualify for the race. That means if the pole time was 1 minute 30 seconds, the slowest a car could go would be 1 minute 36 seconds. Otherwise, it won't qualify. However, if there was a good enough reason for the car to be slow, for example, due to rain, then the race stewards could allow a slow car to participate in the race. This rule returned for the 2011 F1 season and is still in place today. The qualifying process is constantly going through revisions to make the sport more exciting. In 2021, the FIA approved three Grand Prix on the schedule to feature sprint races for qualifying. For the three designated race weekends, a shorter race or sprint race is used instead of regular qualifying to determine the grid order and offer drivers and teams a chance at extra points. We'll soon release a video all about sprint races. Changes are also added each year to ensure an even playing field. 
for 2022. F1 has done away with some rules around tire compounds during qualifying that hurt some of the midfield and smaller teams. Since 2014, drivers have had to start the race on the exact tires they used in Q2. This rule was applied to create more competition, but it also had a downside because it often ended up locking midfield teams into starting on soft compounds, while the bigger and more aggressive teams like Red Bull or Mercedes could easily advance to Q3 on harder compounds. Now, teams can start the race on whichever tire compounds they desire, without having to consider what tire they used in the qualifying stage. That's all for today. Hopefully, we helped clarify the qualifying process in F1. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, press the bell icon so you never miss out on future uploads. And with that, we'll see you guys next time. Till then, rev it up and have a great day.